Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Sunday, June 18th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. Well, we have a disturbance to watch today, but it's not in the area you'd typically expect during the month of June. It's still fairly early in the Atlantic hurricane season, and typically we'd be looking in the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, and Southwest Atlantic for tropical formation this time of year. But we're actually watching out here in what we call the main development region in the central to eastern Atlantic, which typically lights up later in the year, August, September. But we're already seeing some tropical waves marching off of Africa, moving westward, and encountering more favorable conditions than average. Water is much warmer than it normally is at this time of year. Vertical shear is lower, and there's less dry air than we typically have. So these waves have a chance to develop, especially this lead one dubbed Invest 92L by the National Hurricane Center. And we may have to watch the one behind as well, but this video is gonna focus on 92L for now as it has the highest chance of development, 90% according to the National Hurricane Center. Taking a look at a zoomed in view here, this is just before the sun sets in the central Atlantic where this wave is located. It's still a pretty disorganized system, but we'll see a well-defined wave axis here with monsoonal southwesterlies in the lower level clouds back here, strong northeasterly trades on the other side, and that's outlining a southwest to northeast leaning tropical wave axis through this area. But there's no signs of a closed rotating circulation at this point, just this shear line associated with the wave axis. We do see some thunderstorm activity kind of organized in a, a linear band on the northwest side of the wave axis, but we don't see a lot of curved banding structure just yet. Now the wave is just now kind of butting up against these northeasterly trades for the first time. That will probably help to aggregate some of this convection into a smaller space and we might start to see more organized structures in the near term that will lead to a closed circulation forming, but so far it's been a very gradual process. And again, these waves typically don't have much of a chance to develop this time of year in this location, so the fact that it's trying at all is already rather impressive. Now this is a water vapor loop showing an RGB depiction of moisture at different vertical levels. And what I wanna show you here, this is 92L in the center of your screen. There's this general region of background purple and blue within which 92L is embedded. This is the low to mid-level moisture, deep layer moisture that 92L is cocooned within all the dry air in black here is still well off to the west. And so there's a nice moisture envelope with, for Invest 92L to work with and not a lot of vertical shear, uh, which means that over a period of a few days, gradual development should be expected, provided that thunderstorm activity is supported. Now, there are both uh, favorable and unfavorable aspects to the environment right now for organized thunderstorm activity. We do see some, and that is supported by the abnormally warm water for this time of year, like we mentioned earlier, uh, but there's also not a lot of forcing mechanism for large-scale convection. There's not a lot of outflow uh, especially toward the equatorward side. You'll notice that some of these uh, kind of teal cirrus fragments are moving more out of the south on this west side here, even toward the system uh, due south of where the wave axis currently is. And in a, a really healthy tropical wave development setup, you'd see something more like the wave behind where you've got outflow streaming toward the equator, toward the southwest on that south side. So for the wave in front here, not a lot of upper level divergence in general, and there's no big upper trough to the northwest to really aid the poleward outflow channel either. And we can show that on the GFS analysis of 200 millibar wind, which shows 92L uh, labeled with the red L here. And you saw some of the cirrus streaming out toward the north, uh, but it's not a very strong outflow channel, only about 40 knots or so. And you can see the, the streamlines kind of out of the southerly direction. Again, they're not oriented toward the equator like you'd expect if there was a healthy equatorward outflow channel. So perhaps uh, that is uh, muting the development of large scale deep convection near the tropical wave axis at this time. Uh, but the expectation going forward is that given the deep moisture available to the system, it will eventually aggregate and organize that deep convection and form a closed circulation and become a tropical cyclone. And we can see that on the GFS here. This is the 10 meter wind plot now. And uh, there's 92L. And we'll see that going forward, it definitely expects development in short order. We have a tropical storm, you know, by Monday night or Tuesday. And this has been a clear trend on the model for some time. 
That said, the GFS is typically a little fast with development, and if I show you the last couple of runs, you'll note that even last night it expected a stronger storm this morning than what we currently have in the model analysis, which is weaker. So the GFS typical bias is to be too quick with development, and this storm is no exception. So we'll probably see a slower timeline than the GFS was expecting, but some eventual development here is likely. And the reason why is if we go back to that upper level wind plot, we're going to continue to see pretty light wind here. You'll see, you know, generally some easterlies uh, to the east of the Caribbean here indicating a lack of westerly vertical shear that often prevents these storms from forming at this time of year. But we have this nice upper level ridging over the system and some improving outflow relative to today a couple days from now. And so the environment is generally conducive and again there's still moisture uh, associated with the wave envelope. So conditions will favor gradual organization over that time. Now if we look at the GFS it does actually become a hurricane rather strong system east of the Leeward Islands uh, here in about five days late in the week. Friday it's located about here and it starts to turn toward the north and a lot of models have been making this rather strong including some of the hurricane models like HWARF and the HAPS model which is about to replace HWARF later in June shows a very strong hurricane in five days. Now these models typically have a very strong bias especially before a storm has formed. This is still a tropical wave these models tend to be very aggressive so it's unlikely we're going to see anything quite like these solutions more likely this will be a weaker storm that has still suboptimal thermodynamics given that it is June after all and we don't expect things to be going to town in this area of the Atlantic uh, during this particular month. But we'll keep an eye on, on how it develops in the short term but the model guidance has trended just a little bit weaker here in the last couple of runs. This is the European model showing 92L here in the short term and you'll see that it is uh, still fairly weak, maybe a, a tropical depression or storm here in three days uh, around Wednesday and Thursday it's near the islands but not a lot of intensification. If you look at the previous runs it was much stronger uh, just a couple of days ago on these forecasts. So relative to uh, the last couple of runs we've seen the global models back off a little bit on intensity and that would make sense in June uh, so we'll see if that uh, maintains a trend here. This is the GFS mid-level uh, chart showing the steering flow 492 after it has developed into a storm in a few days and what I want to show you here is kind of the dichotomy we have with whether this uh, enters the Caribbean or diverts toward the north what you'll see is that at 500 millibars we have a big ridge sitting in its way here uh, by midweek and so the question is well where is this going to go and uh, although it might not seem so this ridge disappears rather quickly on the forecast there's a trough up here that kind of cuts off dives down toward the south and erodes this ridge in short order so if I go forward here you'll see this trough develop and kind of move toward the south this opens up a direct lane for 92L to turn toward the north assuming that it is a strong enough storm to feel the upper level steering flow a bit more. As you can see the GFS, it does have a strong storm and it turns toward the north uh, well, well away from the Caribbean, not nearing the islands and turning toward the north. But we can tell that uh, this might not happen if the storm is weaker, such as we saw in the European model. Perhaps it struggles uh, with a lack of thunderstorm activity or something like that. If we look at the steering flow by taking a sounding averaged over the vortex, you'll see that there is that southerly steering flow turning it toward the north in the upper levels, but at the bottom it's all easterly steering flow. So if we have a weak vortex, therefore not as tall, it's only going to feel mostly the steering flow down here on the bottom and would therefore continue toward the west rather than turning toward the north if it was a stronger storm. So on the GFS we get this turn toward the north, but we already saw that on the European model we get the wave moving due west and kind of into the Lesser Antilles here because it stays weaker on this particular model run as of the 12Z run today. This difference is also due in part to the fact that the Euro moves 92L along much faster than on the GFS. This is at 12Z Thursday and you can see that uh, the system is near Barbados but if we go to the GFS at 12Z Thursday you can see how far, it, uh, how far away it is from Barbados. Much slower to make progress toward the west and again this is a function of the system being stronger on the GFS and the steering flow is averaged over the troposphere slower for a taller storm in this case. So it moves slower uh, because it develops more quickly 
on the GFS. So we're still seeing some changes on the modeling. Again, if you look at the Euro, it would have been you know slower and stronger before. It's weaker and faster now. We are still seeing some adjustments. There's still several days to watch this attempt to develop and how strong it gets will ultimately determine kind of how fast it arrives near the Lesser Antilles and whether it actually moves through the islands or diverts toward the north here. So if you're in the Lesser Antilles, uh, there is still some risk. The good news is that if the storm comes your way, it's likely to be on the weaker side. However, we know that even open tropical waves that aren't technically tropical storms can have pretty stiff winds on the north side. You guys know that well. So we could still see a band of strong wind and heavy weather rolling through even if the system has a hard time developing and ends up tracking through the Caribbean as a weak tropical storm or an open tropical wave. So we'll keep an eye on that. But uh, right now the timing is looking like mid to late week, Thursday, Friday, in terms of Eastern Caribbean islands, potentially the soonest that you could see some kind of impact. And if the storm is a little stronger and maybe grazes toward the north here, uh, maybe delay an extra day because it would be moving slower in that case. But we saw a few days for impacts might be expected. This is one last graphic here showing the GFS ensemble spaghetti chart, and this is colored by intensity. So you'll see that some of the ensemble members on the GFS in yellow and orange, these are the strong members here that show significant development of 92L. And then the green and blue members stay weak. So this is a group that uh, shows 92L much weaker. These are faster and farther south, just like we talked about. I just wanted to show that on the ensemble, we have two camps that uh, jive exactly with, with what we just discussed. So weaker would be faster and farther south into the Caribbean. A uh, stronger developer would be slower moving and turn toward the north, at least based on what we know right now. Now, some things about the steering flow could still change in the model forecast over the next few days, so you can never guarantee anything, uh, but this is kind of the division that we're seeing right now in the forecast guidance. And honestly, we just need to see this thing develop before we'll have a lot of great certainty. Uh, the classic conundrum of forecasting young tropical disturbances is that when they're spread out like this, very long trough axis as we have in this case, until there's a focused center of circulation that we can pin the tail on, uh, we're not going to have a great idea of where it will ultimately form and therefore how fast it's moving and how strong it's likely to get. We kind of need a tropical storm to actually form in order to increase our confidence level in the forecast overall. So we'll continue watching 92L over the next few days. Again, NHC says 90% chance of development, and it seems like we're on track for gradual strengthening of this system over the next few days, and we'll keep an eye on it for the Eastern Caribbean. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.